Thank you for joining us today as we begin a series of devotionals that are really focused around the conversation of racism. This is an important topic, and so we are grateful to have you joining us as we take on the personal responsibility of understanding how racism impacts uh, ourselves, our communities, and those that we love and share our time with. And joining me for this kind of special edition is Pastor Arley and Richard Smith. And our goal of meeting is really to engage in a conversation to help raise awareness around the topic of racism, what we experience um, at large in our culture, as well as locally here within our communities, and to really encourage people what they can be doing in their walk to change the world around them. Um, but before we get going, what I'd really like to hear from both of you is just a quick background of where you grew up, what the uh, community was like, and where all you've moved in your lifetime so that our listeners have a, a little bit of understanding of where all you've been and what you've experienced. So, Richard, go ahead. Well, I am originally from Baltimore, Maryland. Um, and if you don't know much about Baltimore, uh, from a race perspective, Baltimore is... is uh, roughly about 75% African American and has been that way historically. Um, I have lived, uh, again, born and raised in Baltimore, but um, have also lived in other parts of the country. I've lived in the, in the Midwest, I've lived in North Dakota, um, I've lived in Illinois for a brief period of time, um, all due to my, my military experience. And I also have lived on the West Coast. I've lived in Portland, Oregon. Um, before coming here, selling in Pennsylvania for the past um, 13 years now. So I've, it's interesting because um, I have had the opportunity to uh, really uh, live with and be exposed to lots of people, lots of different cultures, both here within the United States, but also even abroad um, in other countries. and. I feel like the exposure and the um, the opportunity to travel and to meet different different people, even again within the United States, has really helped to inform me um, holistically in terms of my outlook, my perspective on on race um, and even religion. Mm. Which is part of the reason that we were so excited um, to have you on today to discuss. So, Pastor Arley, can you tell us a little of your background? Sure. Um, I grew up in um, actually Richmond, Virginia, in that area. Um, and so um, kind of in a mixed culture as far as different cultures. Um, that was, um, you know, pretty much my childhood and growing up. Uh, I spent a lot of time then uh, later on in Pennsylvania um, in the Allentown area, lived there for quite a number of years. Um, and then moved to Milton, actually my senior year of high school. And so then have had my college experiences and grad school and those kinds of things in other um, contexts, other areas, have been very privileged uh, to do a lot of traveling. And um, both Sharon and I love, that's one of our loves. And so we've had opportunities for different kinds of experiences as a result of that as well. Excellent. Thank you both for sharing. Mm -hmm. And I want to just, let's dive right in. And sure. I want to start with, what are your thoughts on the current events that we see happening in the United States surrounding race and the racial tension that is uh, really palpable at this point? Um, and just what should we as Christians, both individually and uh, communally, be doing? Well, my first reaction is, um, how sad that we are still um, having to deal with this um, in 2020. Um, I'm, a, I'm a child of the 60s. I was born in 1960, and I remember, um, growing, again, living in Baltimore, I remember when um, Martin Luther King was assassinated. And I remember as a child the chaos and the, the horrific backlash that that, that that caused within the communities. I remember. Um, the riots, everything that's been happening here um, in the past several months, the riots, the, um, the lockdowns, etc. And as a child, it, I, 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 it was overwhelming. I will say this, I am so grateful that I have had the parents and the grandparents in the village <laughs> um, mm. that, I've, mm. that I've had because one of the things that um, one of the principles that I was raised with 
was that number one, and I come from a long line of, of pastors on both sides of my family. And one of the things, principles that was instilled in me is that I am number one, I am a child of God first, um, who happens to be black. And so my, my identity has always been in my, rooted in my Christian, um, my Christian faith and my Christian identity. Growing up, that, that really, that, that's sort of how it was. However, fast forward to today and, and living through what, what we're living through right now, um, I am so eternally grateful that that anchoring, that that sense of identity that was instilled in me as a child is what grounds me today and is what keeps me focused and keeps me even hopeful that we will move beyond this and continue, you know, continue to uh, have to fight um, as a, you know, as a country to have to fight to reach a better place of, of unity than we are experiencing today. But I, my initial reaction was I cannot believe that we are living through the civil rights era 2.0. Yeah, I, I would say the same thing. My heart is so saddened by what I see taking place. And, um, you know, feels like feels like we're going back. I, I really felt we were moving forward. Now, I'm not obviously in a context to understand all of that globally or even, you know, nationally. But, like, it felt in my mind we were making great progress when, I, when we see all this happen, it feels like we're going backwards instead of forwards. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that just is, I, I find that very disheartening. Um, if I might respond to that, yeah. sure. um, I actually believe we, 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 we have moved forward from, from the 60s, from what my parents and sure. grandparents had to endure. We, let's make no mistake about it, we have made significant progress. Um, because we can all drink out of the same water fountain. That's right, just one yeah, right. <laughs> example. So sad, yeah. But in many respects, um, we have not progressed as far as I think many of us would like to have seen us progress. We still have a lot of work to do. But I do want people to understand that progress has been made, but we've still got a lot of work to do. Sure. And I think, um, you know, perhaps some of us, myself included, Perhaps we simply just, you know, fell into a false sense of, fall into a, we fell into a lull, if you will, that, oh, things are really, really a lot better than they actually are. And so if for no other reason, we are now realizing that um, a lot of um, the progress that, quote unquote, we think we have made in certain areas, no, we haven't. We've not moved that needle at all. But it is an opportunity for us. Um, to rally together mm. and yeah. do just that.